Hey everybody, this is Pastor Jeff. I want to pick up our study of Romans and we're going to be on chapter 12. All right, so we just finished chapter 11 and before we get into chapter 12, I want to recap it so it gives us context of where we're at. Now remember in chapter 12, or excuse me, chapter 11, we were talking about the plan of salvation for Israel and the plan of salvation for the Gentiles and how those interact together and how we are adopted in as Gentiles into the family of God and how they are cut off those that reject the Messiah that are Israelites but yet there'll be a resurgence a revival uh, in, during the end times of the uh, people of Israel to come to Jesus and, and it talks about God's love and his mercy and his grace and how these are so important to the plan of salvation and so then we can we can extrapolate out to talk about his, his holiness and his perfection that is in his, that's beyond our comprehension. And so it says in verse uh, chapter 11, verse 36, for from him and through him and to him are all things. That means everything we had is given to us of God. There is nothing we have or can hope to have that's not given to us by God. And so we add that in, and, and part of that is His grace and His love for us. And we add that all together, and Paul says, remember what I just talked about. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers. Think about what I've just talked about. I appeal to you because of His love and His grace and His mercy, and that everything is from Him, and everything comes through Him, and He has made all things because of all these things. Because he's the king of king and lord of lord of all things, because of this, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, because, again, that was our great theme in the previous chapter, the mercies of God, which allows us access to his love and to his grace, and allows us access to all the gifts and the promises because of his mercy, that we present ourselves, our bodies, as a living sacrifice. This is not the sacrifice that's made upon the altar in the Old Testament that that was that its life was given and dead and its blood was used. No, because we have that sacrifice in Jesus Christ. This is us giving our lives of a, as a living sacrifice daily to do the things of God. We are to daily be about the will of God, doing the things of God in our life. Jesus said himself that everything he did, he was directed to do by the Father. That he always did the Father's will. So how much more than are we obligated? because he saved us, that we should also do the will of God and give ourselves as a living sacrifice, our bodies. That means our energy. That means our minds. That means our hearts. That means our, our hands, that we give ourselves to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Yes, when we were saved, before we were saved, we were sinners. And then we became saved and he washed us clean with the blood of the lamb that is Jesus Christ's blood and we were made pure and holy. And then we began to live for Christ, and then we failed God. We sinned. And because everybody who's been saved has then almost has turned around and sinned again. Except for maybe the thief on the cross who was saved in his last moments on the cross. But you see, if, you've, if you have been a Christian long enough, you will have sinned again. Sometimes within a day. But see, the point is, we are to get up every day and live a holy and acceptable life because when a Christian fails, it is our responsibility to say, oh, that's all right. God's forgiven me. I'm washed by the blood. No worries. No, we are to be repentant of that. We are to want to turn away from that. We are to say, I'm sorry, God. Forgive me and, and get up and go do the will of God. That's our spiritual worship. Now, I love the way King James finishes this verse in the King James Version, which is your reasonable service. So God, and there it says, I appeal to you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. It is not an unreasonable thing that God should ask us to present our bodies, to present our lives as a living sacrifice. That's not unreasonable. It is a form of spiritual worship because if you don't want to do the will of God, your worship is hollow. Your worship is worthless. You can't praise God out of your mouth and never do the things of God and not give yourself as a living sacrifice to God, not want to do the will of God. It's our reasonable service because of our salvation, because of what he's talked about in the previous chapter, because of his love and his grace and his mercy and his salvation of us. It's this, it's our reasonable service then to give our lives as a living sacrifice. 
and to do the things that are God and to strive daily to live a holy and acceptable life for him. That is a reasonable service. That is spiritual worship. Now it goes on in chapter two, uh, excuse me, chapter 12, verse two, and it says, do not be conformed to this world. That means when we were unsaved, before we were saved, we conformed in that we sinned and we sin willfully, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When we are saved, our, our, we, the, our sins are washed away with the blood of the lamb. And then God begins to renew our mind. And we have to play a part in that. We have to, uh, we have to play a part in that renew our mind by devoting ourselves to prayer, to praise, to worship, to studying the word, to reading the word, to meditating upon the word, to congregating with other Christians and sharing our, our lives and our issues and our problems and our prayers and supporting and edifying one another. That builds a Christian life, which is part of that process of renewing our mind. You see, you, you, you need them both. You need to renew your mind in order to give yourself as a living sacrifice. And if you're not giving yourself as a living sacrifice, the renewing of your mind stops. Salvation begins that process of renewing your mind and opens the doors for you to begin to living that, that life of sacrifice for God. But if you don't continue the life of sacrifice, the renewing of your mind stops. They need to grow together. They need to build upon one another. And so that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God. How do you test? How do you test yourself that you uh, may discern the will of God, and it takes the understanding of, of who God is, and that only comes through the Scripture. It only comes through the Scripture and the Holy Spirit revealing the mysteries of God to you. And through that understanding of, of the Scripture, you can begin to discern the will of God in your life, because most of the will of God is contained in the Scripture. Uh, and then you can add on to it, if God's giving you skills, if God's giving you gifts, if God gives you talents, you need to be using those for God. Because God did not give you those things that they could be wasted. God did not give you those things that you would not use them. And you might say, well, wait a minute, oh, my only skill is pinochle. I'm a really good pinochle player. Then I don't know how God's going to use it, but God's going to use your ability to win at pinochle to witness to others. I promise you that. If you are good at it, you should be using it for God, and you should be doing it as if you're doing it for the Lord. And it says, what is good and acceptable and perfect? That's the will of God. That's what you're trying to discern. You're trying to discern what the will of God is in your life, and that is what is good and acceptable and perfect. And the will of God in my life shapes my life differently than the will of God in your life. But one thing is always in common. He is asking us to give our lives, give our bodies, give our energy, give our hearts, give our minds as a living sacrifice to him that we might live a holy and acceptable life for him. And that is what we are to do every day when we get out of bed. Say, I'm going to give myself to God to live that living, to be that living sacrifice for him, to give myself for him. That I And I'm going to try my best to live a holy and acceptable life for you today, God. And if I fail, I'm going to repent. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repent and I'm going to turn from that failure. And I'm going to give it to you, Lord, and you're going to wash me away. And I'm going to get up and I'm going to live the next day as a living sacrifice for God, holy and acceptable to God, doing the will of God, because that's what we're called to do. Amen.